Hello everyone, welcome back to Daikin Cuts. Today we'll be taking a look at problem 1 from this year's Korean Math Olympiad. So even though this is problem 1, do not underestimate the difficulty of this problem, because in my opinion this is actually absolutely ridiculous to be placed as a problem 1. So how hard is this problem actually? Without further ado, let us take a look at this problem. So this is a number theory problem. We let A, B, C, D be odd positive integers and pairwise co-prime. For a positive integer n, let fn be floor of n over a, last floor of n over b, last floor of n over c, last floor of n over d. Proof that when you sum from n equals 1 to abcd uh, of minus 1 to the power fn, this sum is equals to 1. So off the bat, this may look like some of your typical AIME problems where you need to find some trick to compute this summation uh, in a way that you know, basically do some pattern, pattern matching or telescoping sum or cancellation and so on so that you actually uh, simplify this sum. Well, let us first digest a bit about how this sum operates. So here's some exploration. So firstly, minus 1 to the power of something. Well, basically this will evaluate to either 1 or minus 1 depending on whether fn is even or odd. So this question basically is telling you to prove that there's exactly one additional even fn than odd fn, right? Because then they will all cancel out except for that one extra even fn that will give you the leftover one. So you might think, okay, this sounds pretty straightforward. And then you start to think, okay, how might I want to pair up uh, even fn with an odd fn? Well, unfortunately, if you start uh, working out small cases, you realize that it's not so straightforward because the floor function, well, it's not the nicest function that you can work with. So if you start increasing n, so, uh, you might start off as like the floor is 0, and then eventually it bumps up to 1, then it stays at 1, then it bumps up to 2, and then it stays at 2 for a while, and so on. But the rate at which the different uh, floor functions bumps up is different, and sooner or later you'll realize it's very hard to keep track of the pattern, and this doesn't seem to be very uh, nice. There doesn't seem to be a nice pattern. And you might also try to pair maybe uh, 1 with n minus 1 and so on. But unfortunately, you realize that that doesn't quite work either. Uh, it turns out that i and n minus i actually have the same uh, parity. So you can't really cancel out uh, that way either. So you might be stuck. And it's actually really not easy as a problem one to think of the right idea. And it turns out that the stroke of ingenuity needed is to work with the remainders instead. So what do I mean by this? So let's say you have uh, n that is fixed, right? Then you can write it as, you if you divide by a, you get the quotient, then a plus the remainder, right? And this quotient here is actually the floor n over a. Well, you can do the same for uh, b, c, and d. And then what you realize is that if you sum these four equations together, the left side you get 4n, which is definitely even. And then the right side, a, b, c, d are odd, so under mod 2, they are all 1. So you actually get the sum of the quotients plus the sum of the remainder. And why do we do this? It's to tell us that, well, the parity of the sum of the quotients, which is fn over here, is actually the same as the parity of the sum of the remainders. So this tells us that instead of focusing on the floor function, we can focus on the remainders. So I'll use the notation n percent a to mean the remainder when n is divided by a. This is a standard notation from uh, programming. So how is using the remainder more useful than using the uh, floor function? Well, let's think about the remainder for a bit. So the remainder when you divide by a can be from 0 to a minus 1. When you divide by b can be 0 to b minus 1 and so on. Uh, Ignore the height here, it doesn't really matter. I'm just, uh, without loss of generality, assuming a less than b less than c less than d, but it doesn't really matter for the proof. Now, we have basically uh, combinations that we can select here, right? Because there's a remainder when you divide by a, then you select one, when you divide by b, select one, select one. What is the sum? Is it going to be odd or even? And then we need to show that there's one more even than odd, right? But the nice thing about working with remainders is that each combination actually appears exactly once as you vary from n equals 1 to a, b, c, d. And this is basically 
the Chinese remainder theorem. So surprise, surprise, Chinese remainder appears for a number theory problem yet again. Uh, yeah, so A, B, C, D are co-prime, so you can apply the Chinese remainder theorem to basically say that each selection is going to be covered exactly once when you uh, vary from n equals 1 to A, B, C, D. So basically, now we need to show that uh, before this line, what I need to show is that when you look at all possible uh, A, B, C, D combinations, there's one more even sum than odd sum. Okay, and now it's actually quite straightforward because we can find a rather easy way to pair terms up. So if you fix any first three terms, then your last term, right, you can actually pair 0 with 1, 2 with 3, and so on. And one of them will be even, one of them will be odd. So for sure, they will cancel out uh, in terms of the count. So you can do this pairing for all the, uh, for the last, the choice of the last term, uh, except d minus 1, because I mean, there's an odd number of uh, choices here. So you pair, 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 the leftover d minus 1. Well, too bad you can't pair it, but that means what you are now left with, you simplify the problem. Now you need to show that among uh, the combinations where the last term is d minus 1, there is exactly one additional even sum than odd sum. Okay. Thankfully, d minus 1 is even. So whether this sum is even or odd actually depends on the first three terms. Uh, the last term will be congruent to 0 mod 2. So we simplify the problem now to the following. Among each combination of triplets, uh, show that there is exactly one additional even sum relative to odd sum. And we can pretty much repeat the same argument as, as before. Basically, for each choice of the first two terms, we pair up the last term 0 with 1, 2 with 3, and so on. 1 will be odd, 1 will be even. Uh, then basically, you can pair up except c minus 1. So this means you reduce the problem to looking at each combination of pairs, and you repeat the argument over and over, and then finally, you are down to the case that we just check that the last thing that you cannot pair, the single term of a minus 1, is even. And this is definitely true because a is odd. Yeah, so what do you think of this problem? Actually, I think that firstly, finding the idea of switching to the remainder is non-trivial. Even when you think of the remainder, you have to realize that, oh, it helps because of the Chinese remainder theorem. And then this pairing after that is a bit more straightforward, but a bit annoying to write down. So overall, I think this is a pretty interesting number theory problem. Don't get me wrong. It's actually really a good question, good ideas involved. But maybe it's a bit too hard for a problem one. So what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Stay tuned for more videos and see you soon.